Welcome back. Yeah, I don't like that. We're the Bourbon Junkies. I'm Danny Sean. Today we're going to review something else from the people who use the red wax and apparently it was aged in a cellar for a very long time. I'm very excited about this. All right, here's the thing. 11 in 12 year, maybe smart. Or is it 10 and 11? No, you were right. Is it 10, 11, 12? <laughs> it's a blend of deliciousness. It is, it Have is we... exactly that. Um, <laughs> a special blend of aged barrels, 13% 11 year old, 87% 12 year old. You know what, we'll call it 12. And yeah, right. And you know what, good on them for doing, you know, they used younger. Yeah. Used mostly older, even yeah. though they're one year apart. They're both very old whiskeys. At this point in time in the, the game, yeah. yeah, 11 and 12, or 12 and 13. Yeah. Old AF. Yeah, 115.7 uh, proof. And honestly, probably the best looking packaging Maker's Mark has put together almost ever. I just said 12 and 13, it's 11 and 12. I've, I've already been confirmed on that, and then I was wrong again. Um, uh, It's not even close it's for beautiful. other Maker's yeah. bottles. Like, I honestly think this is the first bottle that the red wax looks a little tacky. Oh, that's interesting. I think it'd look better with like a nice foil on the top. Okay, you know? that's interesting. It. But it is their signature, I get that. Yeah, they have to. They I sue people it. for it. But I think it'd look better without it. I truly do love the bottle shape. Yeah, me too. Um, the packaging looks so much better. They got the nice little gold on there. It looks really, really they nice. They should move their license plate series to that <laughs> bottle. That bottle's phenomenal. This, like, this shape. shape Phenomenal. Would you hate it less though? Uh, no, the whiskey inside, definitely not. But um, the cool thing is this glass looks imperfect Textured. and it looks like it's been like a hammered glass yeah. or whatever you want to call it, but it looks super cool. What I really like is that this looks like marker. Yeah. And it's not obviously, but it looks really cool. Imagine so, if it was though. It's, it's just not. marker and you just like wipe oh it off. You're like, why? First time you spill whiskey on it, gone. Yeah. But needless to say, very cool bottle, very mm. pretty. Well put together package does feel high end. Does how's that, feel how's that price tag though? Also high end? Feels like it looks. Your wallet feels like that glass looks. Oh well, high end. Fancy. You know what? Love makers, love this. Phenomenal. Everybody um, has been saying, this is the best thing ever. Dude, That's what everybody's been saying. It's got that green note of a nice wheat whiskey. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about here. Yes, it's floral. A little bit. You call Potential. it green. Potential spam. And it's always spam too. They're always right. Isn't that crazy? Google is always right about that. Come on. Your watch says fuck you. Hung up on him. <laughs> um, anyways, yes, it floral. is pretty floral. Man, it's but just... it's so sweet. Okay, now you can just, I didn't do any research on the topic, oh, my bad. I don't know what the seller in, like the seller aged aspect of this. There's no information on the bottle about it. I'm assuming yeah. that it was that is implying it was aged in a very cool environment for a very long period of time. Um, we know from going to Buffalo Trace that when they get stuff in mm. like the it was like 15 years plus, they throw it in like a cooler. When they think it's ready. Yeah. They said like one of the Eagle Rares, they were like, it's ready, but we can't we can't use it for a year or two. Yeah. Like ER 17. Yeah. So they throw it in their freezer, their cooler. Their cooler. It's below it's like, 40 degrees. Yeah, it's like, so you don't get as much almost zero interaction between the barrel and the spirit. But you're getting into cool that, the, yeah, the higher age statement out of it. Um, which is super wild to just be like, that one's ready to be an Eagle Rare 17, yeah. but it's 15 years. Yeah. So you gotta put it in a cooler for two years. Well, I think, I actually think the reason that they do it is more intentionally to say like, we like where it's at. Yeah. And we'd like it to stop. Yeah. We don't want to pursue oak any further. Make me Eagle Rare 15 then. Um, but, it smells phenomenal. I really, really enjoy this nose. It is very floral, but in the best amount. I think this is. I think MSRP is one seventy five or one fifty. One of those two. God, that's not cheap. Now here's the thing: if you want to, if Maker's Mark, and and I, I think they should dabble, right? If Maker's Mark wants to release a B tack level whiskey, I think they've done an incredible, incredible job putting the package together, and I think. If that is where this Damn. whiskey is intended to exist, that that's a fair price. If all things aside, I think 
Listen, if you found a George C. Sack for 175, you'd be excited. We all know that, yeah. right? So I don't think that like I don't think that they did anything wrong with the pricing. There's a lot of people doing way higher pricing on not even special whiskey at this point. Oh, it, I mean things are wild. You guys know that. So um, I think they did a phenomenal job. 115 proof <sighs> drinks so like buttery. It, it is like very very cordial. rich in the mouth. It rolls around. It coats. <laughs> I think that's end of the year whiskey for me right now. That is phenomenal. It's expensive, but you want to love it. It's expensive wheat whiskey. Really you good. have to drink it. it. Is really you good. love it. It's really good. It's phenomenal. Dude. It's really good. Yeah. The up, like the immediate um, flavor on the palate isn't my favorite thing I've ever had. What I find oh, so interesting. You think it's like heavy on the floral note yeah, up front? Right away. I agree. Yeah. But what I think is so interesting is how fast and how fleeting that immediate note is. Yeah. Into an extremely rich caramel, fruity, strawberries, yeah. and like just an explosion of fruit. It's fantastic. Honestly. Drinks better than the nose. I have really loved the license plate whiskey. A lot of those expressions I've really, really enjoyed. This is so far and above all of that entire line. What do you want? This is, a, this is the best maker's product. Ever. Yeah. Um, outside of a Dusty okay. that we I'm, had that was I'm really not, good. Yeah, not throwing that in there. I'm no, saying I'm not either. I'm just, I'm just saying, I think that, um, and I think if you would have drank that Dusty back in the day it was released, I don't think it would have been that special. So I think like There's, as a special release, this is the best off that first sip. Best thing makers ever put. I think um, Chris Bragg said, I think there's a little hint of that dusty note it's on funk. this note. Yeah. There's some funkiness. It's definitely that wheat. Or the cellar. I don't, here's the thing, man. I, if this is just, if what this happens to be. Just make this. Is. All of this. If this is Bane what like, else. cold aging does. Yeah. Instead of hot aging. We know what hot aging does. Texas is the, the number one experiment for it, right? Everything in Texas is immediately. And they mostly fail. It's just really over oak. Or it's a very hot like oak and it feels like it happened really fast. It doesn't yeah. feel like it came together incredibly even. Yes. This actually feels like, I mean, it, maybe the seller is putting it in my head. It feels like the opposite of that. To what you're saying, I think you're putting a, a bigger emphasis. So when you're hot cycled like that, like really, really hot Texas, you're putting so much more emphasis on the barrel, less on the whiskey. Cold might be a little bit different. It's more on the whiskey, less on the oak. It's so You're weird. slowing that stuff down. It's... I truly and fully, Love this whiskey. I think and this whiskey is very weird. I, because I do think, because this is a brand new release. Yeah. And it does have dusty funkiness from like a past era of whiskey, yeah. rather than this era of whiskey. None of the license plates smell or drink like this. No. None of the Maker's Mark for, Cast 40, 46's drink or smell like this. And and I like those, I do. Yeah. This drinks like something that you like would have found from a long time ago that would have been a very special thing to drink now. Even though it was released I now, mean, it's just special now, but. and we're finding it now, and it's delicious. <sighs> it is. It is. It's, it's a top tenner. It's in contention, one hundred thousand percent top ten of the year right now. Oh, for the year? Yeah. I do think for sure. I really think because of how flavorful it is, yeah. I think that it would hold up in a blind really well, yeah. which is what the, the top ten kind of comes down to, right? It's hard for low proofers to make that top ten. It because is because against like these, they don't hold up. The mixer's ten. I from think this that's year, still gonna phenomenal. Well. That's ninety four proof or yeah, whatever. Yeah, ninety point four. Yeah, okay, whatever. Low proof. Fifteen years old. One of the best low proof whiskeys to come out this year. This is on the other spectrum. One fifteen, getting a little warmer. Phenomenal. What does it taste? I think like? it's so drinkable though. What does it taste? It's really drinkable. What is it? I mean, the bottle's half fucking gone. What is it? Um, we shared. That's true. Um, was it drink like? Cherry cordial. Happiness. A, like a rich, expensive maraschino cherry. Uh, with chocolate, mm. the very, I, I, I'd say good chocolate wrapped around it. Milk chocolate. Yeah. Semi-sweet. Really fantastic. Heavy on the cocoa in the back, I guess. It's really sweet, man. So much cherry though. I think cherry and strawberry both, um, like Dan said, like it's just, so is this like Maker's breaking into? Four Roses Ellie. Yeah. This is in the competing, I think, with yeah. that. And like high-end Ellie stuff good. from Maker's? Yeah. Man. 150, 175? I, I probably still give it an A. A. I think a flat A, even at 175. So this realistically is one of their so well. first 
products that's like in that real heavy LE market, mm -hmm. expensive, it's Feels premium. That way. Drinks that way. It drinks well. Looks that way. Like you you didn't cash grab it. And I I think I this think they did it well. I think this is a complete package. We've got some other bottles oh. on here that feel like a cash grab. And uh, I don't think this is it. I hope I they do this they every year. they did a good job. I hope this is an annual. Yeah. And I, and I hope the blend's different. Every, I want I want to make this. Different and ages. Maybe this is the plan. Make this into the Four Roses LEs. Yeah. Every year different. Every year they're they're good. Every year well, they're 150. Here's you a good know. way to look at it. How expensive would it be if you took 11 and 12 year MGP bourbon right mm -hmm. now and oh, put right it together? Now. Yeah, insane, minimum 200. Yeah, it'd be minimum. insanely expensive. Retail, yeah. So. How much was Remus Gatsby? 175. So honestly, 175, mind 85, you, that came, almost. that would be Remus from him. That's from them. Yeah. So same price tag, yeah, roughly. Roughly the same age. You know Ooh, what the difference Gatsby is? Might have had 14 or something. Like Differences is the proof. Yeah. But Gatsby that was like barrel proof though. 98. Yeah, it's low. Okay, still it's interesting. Under 100. Okay. Well, I don't want to take anything away from Remus then. I know, but that was their barrel proof. Yeah. So, I mean, they can't do anything to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's no. phenomenal, that's man. A good, that's good whiskey. If you see one at retail, that's 100% a buy. Like, eh. even if you're not a Makers fan. So. $200 buy. Yeah. This is yeah. one of the best things to come out of Makers in a very, very long time. Yeah. It, Ever. There's literally not a 46 Ever. cast ring or a license plate whiskey no, that comes close to this. So definitely not. I, I just, I like the idea of like exploring their whiskey in different, oh, yeah. this is cool. Makers does the license plate series. I didn't think that was that cool. I The marketing I like behind it's fucking ridiculously dumb. Impossible to remember. Like you're just conf confusing your consumers intentionally at yeah. some point. Even if the whiskey was great, I never remembered it. I know there was an FAE at one point. That's all I know. Like I just, this was perfectly done. I think this is an, an extremely cool example <laughs> of a product release.